Hi, my name is Daniel Miares, and this is the third episode in my Art Ideas series. Thanks for joining me. Um, I know this is, a, this is a pretty crazy and hectic time for everyone. Um, if you're like me and my family, we're, you know, we're on day whatever of sheltering in place, and um, you know, I, I know the stress can, can really take its toll. So um, I hope everyone's doing okay. Um, thinking about a lot of people right now. Um, it's just a, it's just a trying time. And so, you know, that's another reason that I think doing uh, videos like this is, um, is really important to me because it's a chance to, for one, to try to connect with people, but also um, an opportunity to encourage. And I think that's a, that's a great, um, great way to think about your art and what you make is encouragement. Um, in my opinion, art is the most radical act of optimism uh, that there ever is or ever will be. Um, if you think about it, um, in this world that we're living in, we've got so many things pressing in on us. Uh, the idea of making stuff is um, really seems uh, superfluous or not, or not necessary in one way, but I would contend that it's the most necessary. It's the one thing that's going to remind us what it's like to be human when all is said and done. Um, as a little example, you know, my daughter, uh, she's 11. Uh, she came up to me the other day and said, Dad, you know, I want to make you a bracelet. And I said, I said, well, okay, that's great, Stella. Um, and she said, well, what colors do you want? And she had me pick out the thread. And she spent the better part of a day and a half, you know, tying knots. Here it is right here. Tying knots and making this bracelet for me. Um, and then she presented it to me you know, in this really sweet way. And, and I've tied it on and been wearing it around for the past couple of days. And, um, it, you know, and I look at it and it just brings joy to me. And, you know, it's her act of making, you know, is this sign of optimism and hope, you know, even when things can seem pretty bleak. So that's my little plug for the day. Um, my thought of encouragement for the day um, is just that. So anyway, this episode... I wanted to really focus on the idea of tools, the tools that, that I use when I make things. I get asked all the time about the tools that I use. I get asked, you know, why I use certain things, what do I use to get that effect, or, you know, it's not really just about technique, but the tools we use when we make can be really, um, really empowering, or it can be a hindrance. Um, you can look at it in a lot of different ways. So I thought having a discussion about the tools that I use would be a great uh, chance to document that for other people to see, but also um, kind of force me to think about some of those issues as well, because I'll end up doing things that I don't think about or give any credence to, but it's only until I take a look at it later on that I realize, oh yeah, that's kind of why I started doing that. Um, so anyway, today is all about tools. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief, but, you know, I tend to go on and on, so bear with me. Uh, and again, um, if you get something out of this and you enjoy what you're seeing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, or you can also catch me over on Instagram at Daniel Miaris Doodles. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, I'm going to keep posting episodes um, in this series, Art Ideas, uh, as long as I have ideas. So we'll see how that rolls. Thanks for joining me. And let's get to the drawing board. All right, so here we are. Um, I'm at my art board, and what I thought I would do is go through the biggies, uh, the big, um, the big tools that I use most often, the things that I go to most, uh, because this could really be a several part series um, to go over everything because obviously on different projects you know I'm using different stuff so the things you probably see most from me are things uh, painted in brush or drawings and usually I work a lot on paper so I'm going to talk over these aspects and maybe demo a little bit to show you kind of how I use them and then uh, again with this format I, I would love for you know, if you do have questions, please fire them back to me, whether it's through YouTube or Instagram, wherever you can find me, um, even through email, you can just send me a message. 
happy to talk in more in depth, but for the sake of uh, this episode, I'm going to just keep moving along. So, um, so to start with, how about drawing? That's something we all do. We all love to do. Uh, and, you know, I'm no exception. You know, I remember from when I was a really young kid, before I could even write my letters, I loved drawing pictures. You know, I, we used to have an old Commodore 64 computer, um, and it would have those reams of paper that were all connected with the little dots running down the side. I would just get that box out and just pull the paper and this one long continuous string of paper and just draw all over it. Um, you know, at a time when computer paper was expensive, I was uh, wasting it um, to the nth degree. But anyway, um, these are the types of pencils I like to use. Um, I like drafting pencils. Um, I don't care what kind. I, I just like being able to choose my lead. And so the leads I like to use, um, the main thing for me is that the lead is as soft as it can be. I like the darkest, softest lead I can find. So usually it's 6B. Um, you can obviously choose whatever you want. It depends on how you work and what you like to do. Um, but for me, um, drawing with that really allows me... Um, to, in a way, this sounds weird, but in a way it allows me to sculpt on the paper. You know, it allows me to push and pull. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So, so with the soft lead, you can kind of, you can kind of skitter and kiss the surface of the paper. Um, you know, very gently to start defining things. And now, you know, also I think I like that really soft lead because it, it forces me to really think about how I'm controlling it, you know. It's a lot of the art supplies I use, I don't know why, but they seem to be, you know, kinds of things that can get out of control pretty fast, um, which to me I like. Maybe, maybe it keeps me on my, my toes in some way. Um, later on, when I'm talking about, I'll talk about the inks that I use. Um, <laughs> people ask me what that process is like, and I say, well, it's kind of, it's kind of like just making a, making the best you can out of a bad situation. That's really what ink and watercolor painting is like. Um, but something about that spontaneity that I really like, you know. And so with the, with the soft lead, you know, I can, I can all of a sudden start pushing into the surface of my paper and getting darks, you know, and getting more dark. You know, there just seems to be that, that extra gear, you know, that you can find, which I really, I really like. Right. And now this is just a little quick example, but you know, and often I I love drawing in my sketchbooks because, you know, sketchbooks are a whole nother a whole nother discussion, but but I'm a big fan. So it's like when you're trying to trying to carve stuff out. You know, I really like the delicate all the way to the, the really dark. You know, I like those, I like being able to get that range. So um, pencils and lead, you know, I don't care if it's the thick, the thickness doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm just always looking for the softest possible. Um, you know, and I use erasers as well, like everybody else. I like nylon erasers a lot. Um, those to me seem to be um, be 
you know, a workhorse for me when I'm trying to pull things back up and needed erasers for the delicate kind of soft edge stuff, but, but I really like the nylon eraser a lot. Okay, so that's pencils. So beyond pencils, um, you know, I, we should talk about paints because, um, well, no, you know what? Let me go to brushes first. So with brushes, I get a lot of questions about brush. Like what kind of brushes do you use and how, you know, do you use sables and, you know, the high dollar brushes I try to steer clear of uh, just because they are high dollar and, um, and they give out just as, just as other brushes do. You know, I, I know some people will say, well, no, you know, I've had this sable brush for a long, long time, but, but, I, you know, I've had brushes that I've had to baby and try to retain the, the points on and, and they give out just as fast as these other brushes I've found. And, and so the thing I've landed on that I use a lot now is these, uh, Yasutomo, uh, Sumi brushes, um, here, let's see if I can get the, the name up close there. So, um, so these, I believe, and you all can correct me if I'm wrong, are used for more kind of up and down, you know, drawing of characters and letter, you know, and forms um, with a certain kind of ink. But, but I found that with this kind of brush, um, you know, here's, here's one that's, here's one that's been put through it a little bit. Um, you know, with this kind of brush, you know, I can truly, I can truly draw with it, get really thin lines, right? Like these little kind of which I love drawing with my brush, which is going to be a future episode upcoming is drawing with your brush. But, um, you know, I can draw these little lines, delicate lines, but I can also mistreat this brush and get big draggy. I mean, that's a lot of variation, um, in one tool, which I'm all about. Um, but another thing that really excites me about these types of brushes is, you know, this is $4.99. Uh, $4.99, you know, I can, um, I can buy a fistful of these at the beginning of a book project and, um, and still feel like I made out ahead, you know, or came out ahead. So, so that's a big deal. Um, but that for brushes, that's what I use. And here's another, here's a larger one, um, for bigger jobs, you know, that I use as well, but still not drastically expensive. You know, my sable, a sable this size, you know, I might have to take out a small business loan. Uh, for that, which, you know, who has time for that? All right, so ink, um, you know, an ink that I use a lot. Uh, for one, I use Winsor Newton inks, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, they're colored drawing inks. But for black and white stuff, I love this um, this Doc Martin um, waterproof India ink. Um, this one happens to be matte, um, which I like, but... Um, you know, it's not it's not real nice to your tools, but but it's bold. It it stays down. You know, when you put it down, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily reactivate when you wash over it with stuff, um, which I really like. And I also use normal, you know, pens and nibs, um, like anyone else. You know, for for more delicate drawing and sketching. But but I try to do a lot of my drawing with my brushes. Okay, um, now. Paper, paper is an important thing here. Um, aside from sketchbooks, you know, I use, I use this paper. Um, well, you'll know, you'll see when it's, it's got the little stamp on the in the corner. Uh, I use Strathmore um, Bristol paper, and so this is this happens to be a three ply, which is, you know, which is really expensive. But you know, for me, when it comes to doing finished um, book illustrations in particular. You know, I, I really have to have a high-end paper um, because I punish it, I beat on it, um, I layer stuff on it, and and I think to to really have it hold up and give me the uh, the look and effect I want, I, I need to spend a little bit on that. So that's the one art supply that, that I do have to spend um, spend quite a bit of money on is the paper. So I use Strathmore um, Bristol paper, the three ply, and I like the one with the tooth. 
um, you know, you can get the more hot press, um, slick surface, but I like the one with a little bit of tooth on it. Not too much, but that's the way I think I use this over watercolor paper. Um, watercolor paper seems to have too much built-in tooth for me. Um, and I know there's variations in those surfaces as well, but this Strathmore um, Bristol paper I, I really like because the fibers kind of drink in um, my inks. Whereas watercolor paper, a lot of times it, it feels like it's kind of it's kind of skating on the surface. Um, so anyway, there's that for paper and now paint. The paints that I use, um, one thing. This is my my palette, um, my uh, my travel watercolor palette, and there's all kinds of brands and stuff. This is more more of an expensive one, but it's robust. It's um, it's, uh, what is it, Schmenk? Is that how you say it, Schmenk? Um, but it's, it, you know, it's the one I found that, that is really rugged and holds up and, and is the size I want, so this is what I use. And now in my palette, I mix everything together. So it's watercolor, gouache, um, just everything's kind of mixed in. I can't tell you what's what anymore. Um, usually the ones that, um, that start cracking get a little chalky, you know, those might be the gouaches, but um, with those different binders, but, but I mix it all together. I, I don't discern between the two, um, in that regard. So when I'm doing watercolor stuff, um, that's my palette. And, um, I also use brush pens, this Pentel, uh, brush pen, you know, it's got this nylon tip on it, which is really nice. And these reservoirs, um, you know, this is made by Pentel and you can get, um, refillable, you know, cartridges to add to it but but these are nice because man talk about delicate I mean you can get like these real simple draggy marks but then you can again you know kind of play with the thick and thin and twisting it you know there's just a lot of ways to use it and you can squeeze the heck out of the base if you want a lot of ink to come flowing out um, you can really punish these things and they just keep working this ink usually though is not waterproof so so if you want to like wash into it and activate it with water, you can do that too. But, but these are handy, especially when you're on the go. Um, I carry these with me. All right. So inks, um, colored inks. I use Winsor Newton, um, Winsor Newton drawing inks. They come in these little glass bottles. Um, sometimes they seem too small because I go through them too quickly. But, um, but really, you know, it's because this ink is like star matter. It's really concentrated, it's really vibrant, um, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but um, but I use these. They come in all different colors. You know, I've got a, a range of colors, but but really I stick to about eight or so colors. Um, I like to I like to spread those out in a palette, and I do a lot of mixing, you know, where I, I, I'll grab some from one well and mix it with another um, on, a, on a ceramic palette, and then that's how I paint, so. Um, and th this is kind of one of my palettes right here, if you can see this. Um, this is a ceramic palette. It's got, I put in a few colors of ink. Um, this is a really old ceramic palette. Um, it's around uh, mid-century old. And I know that because a friend of mine, um, her great aunt uh, passed away and she lived in Texas and she was a, a designer for Neiman Marcus for a lot of years. Um, in around the mid-century and so um, she was cleaning out her studio um, her and her family and she grabbed up these ceramic palettes and she said hey would you want these and I said well heck yes I want those and um, really it was kind of this um, it just felt like such an honor to get you know the tools that another artist had used for their whole career you know making amazing and beautiful things um, you know for me to now have it in my possession and to be using it every day you know, feels like having an artist from another generation willing me forward. Um, if that sounds too weird, but uh, you know, for me, that's a that's a really you know special thing. Um, not just to get free art supplies, but to get things that that meant something and that have the edges chipped or beaten up and actually have color left in it from from another artist. You know, to me, that's that's a pretty cool thing. And so, so the ceramic palettes I use. For the most part, are from um, from my friend's great aunt. So, so anyway, I 
I cherish those kinds of things, um, and I use them all the time. So anyway, um, these inks, you know, I'm going to put down a piece of paper here. You know, these inks are are pretty pretty bold, and I'll show you what I mean. What I like about them is that that on the paper, it doesn't just sit on the surface. It um, it gets in there and kind of stains the paper, okay? And now, like, look at that color. Like, it's, it functions like watercolor, but it, but it really gets in there and changes the fibers of the paper. So it's really like this layer on layer of, you know, staining the paper and almost doing optical mixtures, um, one layer of staining over the other. Um, which I like. I think that's it's very cool. But but again, it's it's like um, it's like orchestrating, you know, a cat circus or something. I mean, it's just very um, it's very happenstance and, and wild to try to try to wrangle. But you know, to me, that keeps it exciting. Um, and I have no. You see how it starts to mix too? Like you can you can start mixing your colors and you see how okay. Now I'm making a lot more colors here. But um but another thing when you're painting I try not to fear too much about getting my black inks out as well because it, it's really about where the pigment lands in the end. It's not really about like, well, you can't mix black with yellow gonna be muddy it's like well maybe so I really Now this, this little ditty is going to be a little technicolor, but you kind of get the point. So, you know, my preferences for supplies and the things that I use to make imagery really change depending on, you know, what I'm trying to make, the story I'm trying to tell, which I encourage you to do the same. Don't stick to the same thing just because. I mean, sometimes you have to because that's all you can afford and what you have. But, um, but I think investigating and being curious, you know, in the middle of telling stories is really important. Um, because, you know, then the story, the way you tell your stories is, is going to change and support the emotions you're trying to drive forward and how you're trying to engage the, the viewer or the reader, as it were, which I think is important to do. Yeah, so these these inks can be really bold and impactful, which I, I like trying to trying to work with those and dial them back and figure you know figure out how to how to wrangle it. Um, but to me, it's a it's a fun problem to solve, and and it's kind of like you know working with gasoline, so which you know has a level of excitement. So anyway, that's the that's the inks I, I use and the way I use them. Um, in a lot of ways. Um, some other things that I use a lot, and these are um, kind of secondary, but 
you know, always keep your glue stick and your scissors around because, you know, if you're someone who's working conventionally or traditionally, you know, there's always a need to patch things and fix things. And, and I'm always painting new pieces and cutting things out and adding them on. Um, you know, that don't be afraid to do that. You know, I think being, um, being part auto mechanic is, is kind of, kind of part of the deal, you know, when you're a, a traditional artist. Um, so anyway, I do that and artist tape, you know, that's another thing. I always keep this around for masking stuff. You remember I talked about the rubber cement in my last episode and masking, you know, I use artist tape for that kind of stuff all the time, creating edges. Um, you never know, you know, when you need something like that. Um, so yeah, um, you know, in terms of art supplies, you know, there, there's millions of ways to do it. There's no right or wrong answer. It's really about what works well for you and keeps you motivated and keeps you moving forward. But for me, these are some of the things that, that I always have around on my desk and that I'm always using. Um, and if you, and if you have stuff that, that you like to use, um, you know, but it's hard to find or that it's too expensive to keep using, you know, there, there might be alternatives. So, so be curious and look for ways to, to figure that out because, you know, unfortunately, you know, money is an issue and, and I think for artists especially. And so, so that's okay. But, but I, I think the, uh, you know, your intuition and your curiosity will prevail. Um, pretty confident about that. So anyway, thank you for joining me. And I uh, hope to see you next time.